In this video, we'll look at the vectors displayed on the radar's PPI. Vectors are crucial tools for understanding the movement of our ship and other vessels. They show the direction and speed of targets relative to own ship, depending on how the radar is set, either to true or relative vector, and whether it's sea or ground stabilized, we can get a different perspective on how vessels and objects are moving, which helps with safe navigation and collision avoidance. Looking at the radar screen, you'll notice multiple moving targets. Since we'll be using the radar for collision avoidance, it should be set to sea stabilized mode. If you're not familiar with the difference between ground and sea stabilized modes, I've made a separate video on this topic. Kindly check the link in the description for more details. The dashed lines you see on the radar display for both own ship and acquired targets are called vectors. This radar is set to sea stabilized mode. The ship's heading input comes from the gyro, showing 200 degrees true. The speed is measured through the water by the Doppler speed log, which is 12 knots. The radar is displaying true vectors, as indicated by the letter T. If it is displaying relative vectors, you would see the letter R instead. Let us bring it back to true vector. As you can see, the vector time is set to 12 minutes, which means that after 12 minutes, own ship's position will be here, at the end of her vector. So this target position will be here. So as with other targets, they will be at the end of their present vector after 12 minutes. Let us disregard the movement of other targets since they are not acquired, vectors are not displayed on the radar screen. If the vector is set to 6 minutes, the displayed vector on the radar screen will become shorter and own ship's position, so as with other targets will be at the end of their respective vector after 6 minutes. If we set it to 20 minutes, the displayed vector becomes longer and the position of own ship, so as with other targets will be at the end of their present vector after 20 minutes. So how do we determine if a risk of collision or a close quarter situation will exist? Let's bring it back to 12 minutes vector time. Assuming there is another moving target on our starboard bow. If we observe the end of her vector, it touches with the end of own ship's vector. It means that after 12 minutes, the position of this target will be here, so as with own ship's position, she will also be here. If both vessels maintain their present course and speed, they will be at the same position after 12 minutes, leading to a collision, so the target CPA will be zero. This is how we can determine if a risk of collision exists when our radar is in C stabilized mode and set to true vector. So how can we determine if a close quarter situation exists, or whether the target will be crossing ahead, or crossing astern? Let's assume that this is the target's vector. After 12 minutes, the position of the target is here, and own ship's position is here. In this situation, the target is crossing the bow. On another hand, if this is the target's vector, and this is the own ship's vector when set to 12 minutes, the target will be crossing astern. In this situation, Always monitor the target's closest point of approach, CPA, if a close quarter situation exists. To better understand the true movement of all acquired targets displayed on our radar, let's compare their movement on the chart. Remember that our radar is set to see stabilized and is operating in relative motion mode. In relative motion mode, our ship remains stationary on the radar display while vessels and other stationary targets like land masses and buoys move relative to own ship's position. This setup is similar when using a radar plotting sheet, where own ship's position is always fixed while other targets are moving. True and relative motion displays are different from true and relative vectors. I'll cover the details of true and relative motion displays in a separate video, which will be featured in my next upload. For now, let's shift our focus back to the vector display. 
The true vector in our radar is set to 20 minutes, while on the chart, the vector is set to 6 minutes, and let's assume that the local time at this moment is 0800 hours. At 0806 hours, the position of all vessels has changed as shown in the chart and in the radar. In our radar display, let's focus on the acquired targets. I will temporarily delete those objects that are not acquired. Observing the movement of all targets on the radar, these are their initial positions at 0800 hours. In the chart, own ship's position at 0800 hours is here. After 6 minutes, her position is here. While in the radar, own ship's position remains fixed. The target in our starboard bow moves in an easterly direction. While in the radar, it moves in a northeasterly direction. The target in our port bow moves southwest. While in the radar, it moves northwest. The vessel in our port quarter moves southwest, while in the radar, it moves west. This is because, our radar is set to relative motion display, while the movement of all vessels in the chart, shows a true motion. Since a detailed discussion of this motion display takes several minutes, I will cover it in my next video. Now as all moving targets continue on their present course and speed, so as with own ship, these are their respective positions at 0812 hours. We have collided with the vessel in our starboard bow. Since this video focuses on vector display, and not on the action of how to avoid collision, let's assume that this target is dead in the water at 0806 hours, no vector will be displayed if the speed is zero. As all vessels continue with their present course and speed, these are now their respective positions at 0820 hour. One target disappeared in the radar display because she was out of range. This target remained stationary, while these two need close monitoring. After 20 minutes, this vessel's position will be here. This one is here. And own ship's position will be here. This vessel will be passing astern in more than 20 minutes, while the bearing and CPA of this target should be monitored as a collision or close quarter situation may arise in more than 20 minutes, if we continue in our present course and speed. Now these are the target tracks from 0800 hours, to 0820 hours. The direction of this target is northwest. This one is northeast. This one is west while this target changes its direction because she is dead in the water at 0806 hours. She moves in a reciprocal direction to own ship's course. Let's go back to the radar display at 0800 hours, and let's set the vector to relative, with a time of 20 minutes. These are the relative vectors displayed by the targets, while own ship's vector disappears. This line is a head flash, showing the ship's heading. If the relative vector intersects with own ship's position in the radar screen, it means a collision exists. If you want to determine whether a risk of collision, or a close quarter situation will exist, you may set the relative vector to a longer time frame. So in this target, we have a close quarter situation, while this one is passing astern. But remember that we take our action to avoid collision based on the aspect of other vessels, not from their movement, and relative vector does not show the aspects of moving targets, so switching to a true vector helps us identify the aspects of other vessels, most especially during restricted visibility. So true vector displays the actual movement of a target in relation to a fixed point on Earth. It shows the true course and speed of the target, and it gives a real-world depiction of a vessel's path over the ground. While relative vector represents the movement of a target in relation to the motion of the observing ship or own ship, it shows how the target is moving relative to your own ship's position and speed. 
This is useful for collision avoidance, as it indicates how a target's position changes with respect to your own vessel. In short, true vector shows a target's movement over the ground, while relative vector shows how the target moves relative to your own vessel. Whether to use a true or relative vector for collision avoidance ultimately depends on the user's preference and situational needs. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, thanks for watching, and see you next time, bye.